time is running out for leaders in Washington to come up with a deal to extend the payroll tax cut. Yesterday, House Republicans rejected a Senate plan to keep the cuts in place for two months. If no deal is reached by the end of the year, about 160 million Americans will see their paychecks shrink. But that's not stopping both parties from pointing fingers at each other. I saw today that one of the House Republicans referred to what they're doing as, quote, high stakes poker. He's right about the stakes, uh, but this is not poker. This is not a game. This shouldn't be politics as usual. Uh, now it's up to the president uh, to show real leadership. He said that he won't leave town for the holidays until this bill is done. Uh, the next step is clear. I think President Obama needs to call on Senate Democrats uh, to go back into session move to go to conference and to sit down and resolve this bill as quickly as possible. Failure to come up with an agreement will also mean unemployment benefits will be cut off to millions of out of work Americans. For more this morning, we are joined from Washington by Politico's White House editor, Isaac Dover. Isaac, thanks for being with us. Do you see lawmakers coming up with a plan by the deadline? Well, this is a, a, a lot of brinksmanship that's going on, Drew. Uh, there, there is a situation here where the president and, con and the House Republicans, and it's not really uh, all of Congress, uh, but the president and the House Republicans are once again staring down the uh, barrel at each other. Uh, the president reached a compromise with the Senate that uh, not only did many of the Democrats in the Senate vote for, but many of the Republicans in the Senate voted for. And so there is not only there is a division now between the Senate Republicans and the House Republicans over what's going on. The problem is that the Senate has left town for uh, the holiday break and has said that they're not coming back to strike up a, a, another compromise, and they're done. If the House doesn't accept and vote up what the Senate voted up to for the president to sign, then this payroll tax cut is going to expire at the end of the year. Now, as you said, other than getting the Senate Democrats to come back to the Capitol, is there anything else that the president can basically do to get this deal done? No? Well, the president doesn't have a lot of political capital with the House Republicans. That's been his problem all year long. So uh, legislatively, there, there really isn't an option here. Either the House Republicans are going to have to pass the bill that the Senate passed, or the Senate is going to have to come back and vote on a new bill uh, that the House would find acceptable. So th the only thing the president can do is try somehow to uh, wrangle some votes uh, in the House to get it to pass, but it doesn't seem like that's too likely uh, of a, a thing that would turn Republican votes uh, in this situation, or really in any situation. The president has been fighting with House Republicans all year long. We've come, as you know, to a number of other showdowns over the course of the year. This is the latest, and it does not seem like the House Republicans are going to want to uh, give in to the president on this. Is the, you know, you, if you think about it, if the Senate can come up with a compromise on this two-month extension, why is there simply so much trouble in agreeing on a one-year extension? I think a lot of Americans look at this and say, if you can do two months, why can't you do one year? Well, the problem is paying for it, and uh, that's not an easy thing. It sounds, uh, every American family who's thinking about a thousand dollars, which is what it's about, going to be approximately, for each paycheck, for each annual salary to come out here, uh, if this tax cut doesn't get extended, that's a lot of, when you add those thousand dollar chunks up, that's a lot of money. And uh, the issue is that the, the Senate and the House need to figure out some way to agree with the President on where that money would come from. They have been able to do that. The Senate and the President figured out a way to pay for things for two months but they'll need to come back to it again in two months uh, and figure out how they would pay for it for, the, in, for it to continue through the end of the year because right now that's not something that they have uh, been able to sort out a solution on. Can you expand a little bit more on this tactic that the Republicans use to reject the Senate plan? Yeah, this is, this is a game of chicken at this moment. Uh, the, the President and the Senate agreed on a compromise that they, that the president figured would force the House Republicans to, uh, to go along with because he knew that the Senate was going to leave town and that that would mean that the House only had this option, either pass the Senate plan and preserve the payroll tax cut or have the paychecks lose this money. 
the House Republicans decided that they would uh, test the president's medal right back. So what they did is they said, look, we're not going to pass that, so now it's on you, Mr. President. Uh, you've got to figure out a way to, with the Senate to work out a different plan, otherwise the, we're going to blame you for the tax cut, the, the taxes going on. This, this is all politics what's going on here, uh, un unfortunately. It's, uh, once again, you see the, uh, the House Republicans and the President coming to uh, another place where they're just refusing to budge on either side, both trying to see who can get the, the upper hand and what we've got is a, 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 essentially a political public relations battle. If over the next couple of days it looks like the president's taking the heat for the, the taxes going up, then I think what we're likely to see is the president try to figure out some way to try to cajole the Senate to come back. Um, and if it's the House Republicans who are taking the heat, then, uh, th then I think you'll, you'll see is increased pressure for them to figure out a way within the House Republican conference to uh, agree to the Senate version of this plan. Well, as you said, it's all politics, and Americans did not put these people in office to sit there and start pointing fingers. They put people in office to do their jobs and make it a little easier for them. Now, as we're talking about finger pointing, who do you think is eventually going get, to get the blame on this if it doesn't happen? Uh, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, this is uh, as as we've said uh, all year long. There have been these battles. There have been these showdowns, uh, and and neither the president nor the House Republicans have come out of it looking very good. The Congress's uh, approval ratings is the, uh, are the lowest in American history. The president's approval ratings are, are going down. There is a lot of dissatisfaction with the dysfunction in Washington. Um, but the, the the president and uh, the Speaker of the House have both described. Uh, the Speaker of the House has said that he basically feels that he's on a totally different planet from the president. They, they have very different philosophies, and they're not uh, able to come together on compromises like this or or on on others when it comes to spending uh, and and tax cuts and and where the money will go and where it will come from. Well, as they say, tis the season going to be in very interesting next few days. Politico's Isaac Dover, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you.